Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. So far in this chapter, we've talked about many of the pathophysiologies that can affect the heart valves. Let's finish up this chapter on valvular diseases by talking about one last condition, endocarditis. Get ready to hear an epic tale as old as time, as we tell a story of the beast with a heart of flame. Endocarditis is defined as inflammation of the endocardial surface of the heart. At Sketchy, endocarditis is represented by our recurring symbol, the lantern with a heart-shaped flame. For the most part, when we use the term endocarditis, we actually mean infectious endocarditis, an infection of the endocardial surface of the heart, i.e. is the most common cause of endocarditis and is usually caused by a bacterial infection. Hence, our recurring sketchy symbol, the bacterial lantern strung up over this old tiny town square. Regardless of the pathogen responsible, the pathogenesis of infective endocarditis is the same. Abnormalities on the valve surface provide a nidus for circulating microorganisms to land, forming a growth on the endocardial surface known as a vegetation. Vegetations are represented by these potted plants hanging from the lantern. Don't let their cuteness fool you, they can become floating death buckets, causing the symptoms and signs that we'll get into in a moment. Of course, endocarditis isn't always caused by infection. Non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis is a rare condition characterized by the deposition of sterile platelet thrombi on heart valves, hence the non-bacterial clumps of hay spilled all over the ground. NBTE is most commonly associated with advanced cancer, represented by the recurring sketchy symbol, the cancer crab. Another association you'll need to remember is between NBTE and systemic lupus erythematosus, a condition known as Libman Sachs endocarditis, represented by the recurring sketchy lupus wolf running through these potato sacks, spraying hay all over the place. Since we're talking about thrombotic endocarditis, endothelial injury in the setting of a hypercoagulable state is thought to be critical for its development. This combination of factors triggers platelet deposition on valve cusps, forming the characteristic thrombotic vegetations of MBTE. We won't talk too much more about MBTE in this sketch, since it's super rare and treated completely differently. What you need to know is if your patient has endocarditis, but no evidence of infection. Think about MBTE and its causes, cancer and lupus. All right, enough pathophys. Let's talk about the clinical presentation of endocarditis and what you should be looking for in your history. We'll focus on IE for most of this sketch since it's much more common. Fever, represented by the recurring sketchy symbol, the flame bandana, is the most common symptom of IE. Whoa, fever in an infectious process? I know, your mind's blown right now. It's all right. I'll give you a moment to recover from the shock of that doozy. In addition to fever, many of the other clinical manifestations of IE depend on the time frame of the infection. So make sure to pay attention to how long your patient's symptoms have been going on. Infective endocarditis can be classified as acute or subacute. Acute IE presents as an acute, rapidly progressive infection with symptoms like fever, chills, and malaise developing over the course of a few short days. Acute disease is represented by the recurring sketchy alarm clock, ringing acutely. Subacute IE, on the other hand, is represented by this alarm clock, which hasn't gone off just yet. Subacute IE occurs over weeks to months and consists of low-grade fever, represented by this woman's flame bandana and nonspecific symptoms like anorexia, weight loss, and fatigue that seem to smolder forever, just like her slow-burning, smoldering torch. Unsurprisingly, IE is associated with a broad array of systemic complications. And sometimes, patients may present with symptoms of these complications, so let's go through a few of the most common ones. As you might expect, stuff growing on valve cusps makes them less effective at, you know, 
being valves. Severe valvular dysfunction caused by endocarditis inevitably leads to heart failure, represented by the recurring sketchy symbol, the floppy heart balloon.